Let's look at the most basic type of genetic cross, which is a monohybrid cross. And again, if this is the first time that you're doing anything like this, we're gonna stick to the classic textbook example of eye color, which is actually totally wrong, but that's okay. It's good for demonstration purposes and everyone likes to look at uh, Brad Pitt's beautiful blue eyes. I don't know, I gotta update my, my people. Maybe it's not Brad Pitt, I should be talking about Bieber. But I don't look that deeply into his eyes, so I don't even know. Some of you can correct me, please. So here we go. Uh, it's the question, it can be phrased in many different ways. We'll try to look at a whole bunch of different ways that these questions can be asked. Here's just one way. Show a punted cross between two parents who are heterozygous for brown eyes. So I have to know my vocabulary a little bit here. And you should always start by setting up your genetic questions like this. So I have everything prepared here, but um, in some other videos, I think I've done this by hand. And you should practice doing this. You should always set it up like this. So the first thing you should do is write down what the parent phenotypes are. I find these kinds of genetic questions really fun to do. It's like a little mini puzzle and then as they get more complex, the more organized you are, the better. So, okay, so parent phenotypes, I remember that phenotype sounds like physical, so that's actually the physical traits. So here's just something to help remember, uh, the physical traits. So let's start by doing that. The parent physical traits, we're talking about their eyes, right? So one parent's gonna be crossed with another. Well, it tells me very clearly in the question they both have brown eyes. So brown eyes for you and brown eyes for you. I'm not worried about which is male and which is female because this type of cross right here is not sex linked. So it doesn't really matter um, whether the, the sex chromosomes are not involved. So you have to identify in a question. After you see some of the other examples, uh, you'll eventually start to figure this out. So, the physical traits of both parents are brown. Now I need to go and figure out the genotypes. Remember, if someone asks you, what's your genotype, you can't say brown, they're asking for a specific sequence of letters. Now I know brown, now I have to establish what letters mean what, so I'm gonna have this at the side. You should also write something like this down. Let big B equal the allele for brown eyes, and little b equal the allele for blue eyes. Now, brown could be big B, or it could be big B little b but the question tells me they're both heterozygous, so that means they have to be big B, little b. And the other parent is also heterozygous, so big B, little b. Great, fantastic. Now what I need to do is uh, split their genotype and assume that they're gonna have babies, so they're producing sperm cells and egg cells. These are gametes, so in their gametes, and by the law of segregation, this parent cannot pass on both big B and little b to one kid. So these will get separated. So what are the possible gametes? Very simple. During meiosis, these are located on different chromosomes and uh, they're actually going to be split up. They're going to be split up. So you're going to end up, you could pass on a big B or you could pass on a little B. This parent could also pass on a big B or pass on a little B. Fantastic. Now all that's, all that's left to do, once you get to this stage here, which is why this is very important, usually the hardest part of genetics questions is identifying carefully what the phenotypes and what the genotypes are. Once you have that, the rest is easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Here's some notes for you if you can't remember what big B and little b mean. Big B, a big letter is dominant. It shows its effect whether in the heterozygous or homozygous state. And little b, which is recessive, all the little letters are recessive, they will only show their effect when the organism carries two copies of this allele. So now what's left is we just make a little Punnett square. Here, for fun, I have a male and female symbol. Uh, this will be important. Sex-linked questions, but in this case, it's not necessary. So all I got to do is now redistribute these gametes down here. Um, and I have extras here, so you can, we can leave that up there. So let's start with this parent. This parent can either pass on a big B or a little b. This parent can either pass on a big B or a little b. And the rest is just filling in, which is really fun. So bring this over here, bring this over here. Then this kid is going to be big B, big B. Same thing over here, big B over here, little b, this is going to be big B, little b. Over here, we're going to get big B comes down here, little b goes across, big B, little b. And then the final one, up, oh, little b, little b. And I have one conveniently right here. And I'm pretty much done. But depending on the question, if they ask you something else, what I like to do is write in the phenotypes as well, just to show that I really know what's going on. This is clearly going to be brown-eyed kid. This is going to be brown-eyed kid. This is going to be brown-eyed kid. And this is going to be the only blue-eyed kid. That doesn't mean that if you have four kids, you are guaranteed to have this distribution. What it means is it gives you a probability that if you have one kid, 
you will have, uh, I don't know, a 75% chance that the kid will have brown eyes, maybe a 25% chance that they'll have blue eyes. There will be a 50% 50 chance that they will be heterozygous for blue eyes, 25%, depends on what the question is. So just be specific. So there are a couple ways to represent this. These are, this is a ratio of the possible genotypes that uh, you could pass on to your kids. Big B, big B, the big B, the little B, the little B, the little B. It's kind of fun to say as well, too. And the ratios will be 1 to 2 to 1. And I'm just counting up based on these boxes right here. So I could say something like this. 50% of the kids will be heterozygous. That is true. I could say 75% will have brown eyes. That is true. I could say 25% will have blue eyes. That is true as well. This could be, the, this could be done for any type of monohybrid cross that's all it is monohybrid meaning one trait is being studied and in this case it's eye colors being studied so your uh, crosses can be made like this really easy to study and really fun we're going to get into some more challenging stuff up in the next video which we'll talk about sex linkage and also explains why we get 50 percent boys 50 percent girls okay hope that was helpful